Okay, everybody, welcome back to part two of the journal that I'm, I'm showing. There are three signatures. This is signature number two. And I did put a piece of cardboard in here to stop me so I wouldn't go over into signature three. All right, so I'm going to pick up where I left off after the first signature. This is a hydrangea napkin, a different kind than this one. And I really liked it. And I put this, the, a lot of these things were put in here before I started researching the... Um, copyright free images on Flickr. All right, so this is pink paper and I decided to go ahead and do a pink theme on the other side. So this napkin was added after this was done. This is some of my doodles. This is photocopied and on, I think, nope, not on tea dye paper, but I did do the walnut stain around the edges and I cut it around the different circles. This is leftovers from other projects where the paper was too long and I just saved the strips and then cut them to a certain length to make sure I could get enough stuff out of them. Leftover scrapbook paper, did the zigzag stitch on the top, uh, sewing it together, folded over to the other side and glued it. I mean, it's a no-brainer. This was leftover from a page I was gonna use in another uh, journal and I really like the setting so I just zigzagged around it and saved it. It's not mounted on anything, it's just a piece of scrapbook paper and I really liked the bicycle and the pink roses. I thought that fit in well here. This is a double-sided pink paper clip and the other side's kind of a miscellaneous mishmash thing. So this went uh, okay on this side because it's also pink. Um, this envelope is the zinnias that I drew, and it's on. It's in my Etsy store as a digital printout. Printout, and I cut it and sewed it into a pocket pocket long before this was done. And I glued it on there randomly, and then went, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Too late." And I wasn't going to rip it up. This is from ICAD, another journal card. This is my drawing of the zinnia or Zinnia, however you pronounce them where you live. Then I had another double-sided paper clip that I learned how to make from Cory Dahman. This is just stamps. So I put it on this side where the flower was showing. Let me see how to get back on here. Make sure I get it on here without ripping my envelope. There we go. The envelope was sewed, then glued on here. So I didn't, I glued it completely flat down and didn't leave the back open for another pocket. This is a flower that I drew and I colored it and had a strip left over. It'll be another piece of paper that's covering a whole page further back in this book. This was the strip that was left over and I kept it and just glued it on here because I couldn't bear to get rid of it. This is a uh, scrap dyed paper ribbon ruffle that I learned how to make from Natasha at Treasure Books. And I've made tons of these, and I love them for end pieces instead of washi. I think this holds up better than some of the washi I've got. But I really like it. All right, so we're on to yellow themes. So I printed off yellow flowers from the commons. And these are also leftovers. A lot of this stuff here is all leftovers. The only thing that's not are these three pictures that I printed off on the uh, tea dye paper. This is from the, from this, from a version of this, just a smaller strip. Same stencil from um, Carla at What If NC. So I just did it on here. Th these two belong to each other. This is my stencil of sunflowers that she sells on her site, and I also sell it on my Etsy store. Then I used um, leftover green dyed paper, and I went ahead and did the ivy with a yellow and a, I think I used Tangelo, which is a orange of Memento. And then I used the yellow, which is, I can't remember the name of it. What is it? I can't see it from here. Anyway, it was a yellow and orange combo that I did the stencil with. This is a picture I did not use here, so I glued it on cardstock. Now the reason this one is so important is because I did this before I did any of it, and I wrote down things that I like to look at. So I'm gonna read them to you. Things I like to look at. Leaves, art supplies, bottles, collections of any kind, wine bottle labels, flowers, coffee, knitting, crochet, sew, 
um, ink pens, watches, sun, moon, stars, postcards, books, stamps, maps, roosters, fat birds, ceramics, sheep, goat, cows, birdhouses, birds, bees, butterflies, stamps, clocks, and typewriters. I wrote all this down before it went in the book, and then when I decided I wanted to make the book, I went to the comments and started looking for all these things to put in my book. Now, I didn't put all of them in here. Like, I don't have goats, and I don't think I have any cows in here. Um, the collections of any kind is the art supplies. You'll see that. Books. I don't think I have a lot of books in here. I did the sun. I don't have a lot of moon and stars. I don't have fat birds, and I did mostly chickens, and there may be one or two to token roosters on that page. Ceramics, I don't think I have any of that in here. So I tried to find as many images as I could that were copyright free from Flickr, and under the, common, uh, under the um, Flickr moniker is the commons, and that's where I keyed in the words what I was looking for, and it popped up with copyright free stuff. This envelope is made from scrap paper from doing other books. I learned how to do this from Corey Dahman. You just take all the scraps, you sew them with a zigzag or a decorative stitch. You make a, a piece of paper as big as you want it. Then you take your um, stamp board from We Are Memory Keepers, cut it down to size, and make your, uh, not stamp board, an envelope board. Then you make an envelope. Stupid simple. Um, when I glued this one down, at least I remembered to leave this open in the back so I could put this in here. Um, and then this is just another one of those paper clips I learned from Dor uh, from Corey Dahman, and it has the pocket in the side where you can put a little something in the side. It was yellow, so I decided it had to go here. This is this picture right here made small for the tab. Black and white vegetables, there were a lot of them in the commons. These came out of, um, I think, an old seed catalog. This was, these were gardening tools, and I ran this off, and then I found this little strip here. I found stuff that had pictures of gloves, and so I cut them out. This is vegetable seeds. I think this, can't do it. see, this is bush lima beans. This stuff came from this catalog here. I took a version of the peas and made them small so it would be the tab for this page. I like looking at calligraphy and alphabets and different things like that, so I found a bunch of those that looked vintage. Printed them off, cut them down, put the ink around them, and then I have this page. This is the same flourish I used on another page that I colored orange. I just left it black and white here for the tab. I printed off so much, I did two more pages with it. This is the spiral ATC stencil for What If NC. These are my birds and birdhouses that I mentioned in that little card that I had of things I like to look at. I love to watch birds. Um, we put, we have one, two, three, four, five feeders out, two hummers, and then three seed feeders. And I've seen uh, black chin hummers and my first ruby-throated hummer at my hummer feeders. So I was tickle pink. These are from magazines. This is an ephemera card. Um, this is a stencil from What If NC. I just put that on there to fill in the space. This came from... This looks like... What, what's her name? Mary Egbert type stuff. It came off of... A tablet of some kind of paper so I cut it down and then I went on and, and printed off like birds like this and cut them out and then stuck them on there randomly and here and here and then I found an image on the the vintage stuff of wooden bird houses and that's my tab for my bird page more with the vegetables black and white vegetables you've seen these other places Some of these are duplicates like this one and this one. I didn't realize it till this morning when I went to do the book flip. I'm like, oh no, this is the whole piece I printed off and then I cut 
it out because it wouldn't fit right here and I wanted something here. And when I was doing this, I wasn't thinking about that being a repeat over there. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. This is um, a bean pod. I think this is lima beans. That's my tab. Then I have a blue page and I use blue jelly print to accentuate the letters of the alphabet, M for morning glory and B for bachelor buttons. This is a dahlia and this is jelly printed paper. There's a pocket. Then I made this for the um, iCAD this summer. Just a journaling card. It's made out of an old business postcard. And then I didn't put anything special. I just used leftover um, jelly paper for my tab for this one. You will see this paper again here shortly. This is art supplies. And I was so surprised at how many pictures I found it, that were vintage of old art supplies. I love the paintbrush ones where they show the different kinds of paintbrushes. This one with the scissors is so cool. And then there are watercolor boxes and art supply boxes. For my, this was a rubber stamp. And look at this old um, brayer. And it looks like pretty much what we use today. Very cool. So for this, I took this and made it small and skinny, and that's my tab. Here's my blue pages, and I told you you would see that jelly print again. I glued these things on here first, and I thought, oh my gosh, there's too much white space in between. So I cut the jelly print up. I had already put this on this um, pocket right here, and so I thought, well, let me take the scraps from that, use it for my tab, on this one which I sewed and glued on here then I thought okay I have strips left so I took the little strips and cut them down to fit in here this is how I use my leftovers and this one was also a leftover from all of this this right here is this picture made skinny and I cut it off so I could have a tab this time I did colored vegetables because I had the green page here. I put leftover cardstock for the backing. This is a pocket. This is a rug. This is a picture of a rug <laughs> that I got out of a magazine. And the colors just melded in, so I used it. This is part and parcel for this. These two are the same. This one's on green, this one's on cardstock. Then you open it up and there's a card inside. This was just I didn't want to put this here and then put something in front of it and it would block out the picture. So I thought, eh, forget it. I will just put it in here like this and leave it in there like that. My picture is of a carrot that I got somewhere off of a, I think it was an, something like this where I just cut the carrot off. And this is another one of those... Um, bookmark uh, one of these paper clip things that has the pocket in it and I just put that up there I like old antique houses and barns in towns little towns they look so quaint a lot of people like getting married in these little tiny old churches I think is really beautiful where they have wooden floors and the old wooden pews so I cut a bunch of out out of a magazine and glued them all on here as best I could. These were actually, I don't think I, did I cut these out or somebody give these to me? I think somebody gave me a sheet of these and then I cut them out. And they all were framed in a black frame. So I left that on every one of these and I didn't have to use any scrapbook paper. Then I had a um, jelly print from the bricks, the brick stencil from What If NC. And I decided that I really wanted to use the red brick because of this sign that says home sweet home. So I put the red um, scrapbook paper, scrapbook paper, cardstock here, it was leftover cardstock, pasted it on, glued it onto the uh, red bricks, used the uh, walnut stain to kind of make it look old because I wanted to make sure that I got these in here. This is my tab, which is a leftover piece of the brick paper. But I found these mushrooms, these red and white mushrooms on the um, the commons and then I put the red 
cardstock, which was also leftover cardstock on these because I thought these were so interesting. I love these. And I could not resist having them in here. I just, I couldn't help it. it had, they had to go in here. So, you can put this here, but it flops around because this is cut low. So I just went ahead and put it sideways in here. You can still see the majority of the mushrooms. And this is um, old cardstock from a tablet. So I did the double-sided pocket fold over. So this side means a lot to me. Uh, while I was on the Commons, uh, Southern Methodist University SMU, which is in, I think, I think they're in the Dallas area, has old pictures of towns around here. And there's a postcard marked Holland, Texas from 1907, and it says Baylor College on it. Um, my family is from Holland, Texas. My mother's people grew up around Holland, Texas. It's a very small town. And I had to put this in here. I had to put this in here. Then there was another postcard from Belton, Texas, and it's from the 1900s also. Belton is the town outside of Temple where my grandmother um, lived. I lived there for a while. My husband and I lived there for a while. His family had a house there, so I had to do the Belton, the Belton postcard because these all mean something to me. And this is a picture of the old Belton courthouse. And this is a person writing to their friend out of state what their courthouse looks at like and that they will be home soon. So I just put it on cardstock and then used that walnut stain for it. These are black and white flowers. I used the P for pansy, the C for chrysanthemum, and the H for hydrangea. This is a very small picture, I think, from that seed catalog that had a bunch of pretty flowers in a row, and I made it very small and used it for my tab. I like butterflies. When we lived in Virginia Beach, Virginia, I had a container that had parsley in it, curly parsley, and it was only to attract the swallowtail butterflies. And every year I would get caterpillars. They would eat the parsley down the stalk, so I would have these green stalks sticking out. But I had all kinds of chrysalis all over the yard, and then there were butterflies. I don't mind giving up my parts, parsley for the butterflies, so I, I like butterflies found a very small picture of a group of butterflies and used that for my tab. These are again the um, copyright free stuff that I got right off the site. Yellow flowers, there's my little bee stamp. I needed something in the middle so I printed this one off and it was a larger size card about this side and I was like, it's not going to fit. Oh, just cut the flower out and glue it in. This is a large version of another flower somewhere else. It's a yellow iris, and that is my, um, my tab. This is just in here because I just thought it looked cool. It's uh, somebody's bookkeeping information. It's a store named Boston Store, and it's in Riverside, Washington, and it is their bookkeeping stuff. This is mine. I cut the, the other side for another pocket on another page, sewed it, and then just glued it on here. I probably should put this on cardstock because it's a little flimsy. This is a mishmash of things, and let me explain to you what they are. Most of these things are ephemera cards that came in packs that I bought or people gifted to me, and I really like them, so I just wanted to make sure I saved them, and I glued them all on this section. There's no rhyme or reason of what's here. It fit. And that is my explanation for this page. I made this coffee dyed um, deli paper pocket. It just has a pretty picture of flowers in there. This um, grape hyacinth stamp was gifted to me and I stamped it on there so that when you open it and close it, the whole flower's there. I learned how to make the see-through pocket vellum type um, pockets, I think, from Corey Dahman. And when I made it, 
I found this in my ephemera stuff and decided because you could see through it, this would be a good one because you can really see the color through the, um, through the vellum. Then I put a tab, which was something that was like this, and it was just short enough that it worked perfect. Um, I found these eggs in my ephemera stuff. These eggs came off of a free download from Graphic Fairy. I think these pictures I got are close to 10 years old, the file. Found this in there and thought I would put this there with the other eggs. This is some kind of miscellaneous ephemera. Since the color kind of was the same as what's on the page here, I decided to use it. This is scrapbook paper I use for the pocket. Made this, put this beautiful stamped image of a flower on here and it was black and white. And I decided that since I had the pink paper over here, I needed to make that work over here. So I took a um, one of these watercolor. This is a Koi pink watercolor brush and just colored the uh, petals on the flower. And I thought, well, that'll tie it into here. Plus, I had this journal card that had pink flowers in it. And put that in the pocket. The background is kind of an orangey color, so I thought I need to cover that up. So I'm not pulling this off the page. I'd already glued it on there too late. Just cover it up with something pink and hope nobody notices. <laughs> Again, botanical pictures of flowers. These are or A lot of these are orchids and lilies. And they came out of some kind of a botanical book because they show you what the rhizome or the bulbs look like. And this is just a shrunk down version of some flower. And that's my tab. I like this napkin because it reminds me of peacocks, although it's an abstract sort of look to it. But I really liked it, and I just put it up there because I liked it. It had pink, and the back of the paper was pink. Then I have the deli paper, and there's another one of those irises from that common napkin you can find everywhere. And that's the end of signature number two. So thank you for joining me for signature number one in a previous video and signature number two. And... I will continue on and finish with signature number three. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.